Hi, this is Don Allen, and what we're going to look at are uh, the uh, errors of approximation of interpolating polynomials visually. We're going to consider a few examples showing the function, the interval, the number of subdivisions of the interval into equal parts. And what we'll see is that some of the approximations are very, very good, while others are quite poor. In the following, all the calculations and plots were generated with maple. The mathematical text you see was generated with scientific notebook. So here's the setup. We're going to interpolate a function at given abscissas those are the x, x's, x of i, i equal 1 to 0. It's very convenient in inter interpolation to start at 0 for the first index. So we're going to look at the data as uh, shown there. It's the ordered pairs x sub i, f of x sub i from i equals 0 to n. For some given function that is n plus 1 times continuously differentiable, over some interval that contains all the x values. The interval under study is a b. The question, a natural question to ask is this. If we know the interpolating polynomial and a given x is presented, can we estimate the difference between the original function and uh, the interpolating polynomial at the function? We call this uh, the absolute value here of this difference, the error of approximation at x. It is natural this error should depend on at least three factors. And those factors in the error of approximation are the nodes themselves. Those are the x sub i's. Uh, here we are assuming that x0 equals a and xn equals b and the other values are increasing from a to b. The selected value of x and properties of the function f of x. From our studies there is a, a basic theorem uh, that uh, describes all this. Um, once again the x sub i's are the nodes but in this case, uh, they can be any nodes. Um, we can certainly expect that the farther x is from the nodes, uh, in fact, even if it's outside the range of the nodes, the uh, greater will be the error of approximation. And one thing that people often do is they do an interpolation of data, and then they evaluate the interpolant, that is the polynomial or whatever, beyond the range of the data, well beyond the range of the data. And that often leads to great errors. Although uh, people tend to want to believe the prediction is accurate. It's, it's, actually, uh, it's actually quite a, a source of error <coughs> in um, approximation theory. We might say also the more a function oscillates, the, represent uh, the less representative of the function the data uh, uh, will be. That is, you might evaluate the data all where the function is sort of about the same, but yet the function is oscillating in between the points. Consequently, the error of approximation will also increase. There's a fundamental theorem here that tells all provided the function has uh, enough continuous derivatives. So it will not apply to functions with corners, such as the absolute value function. However, we can apply it to any function. It's just that uh, if the function does have corners or jumps or so forth, the interpolant will be often very much in error. Here's the function that comes from the theory. We know that we're, we're going to uh, interpolate the function at the nodes x sub i from i equals 0 to n, and they're uh, all in a, b. Let p of x n be the unique polynomial of degree equal to or less than n that interpolates the data. This is the theory that you have studied. Let x be some fixed value in the interval a, b. 
although even that's not required. Then there's a value t in the smallest interval that contains all of those points for which the difference between the function and the interpolant is given by that long expression that you see, the n plus first derivative of f at c divided by n plus 1 factorial times the product of those factors x minus x sub i, where i ranges over all the nodes. What we need to do is estimate the right side of this inequality. And we're going we're gonna to stumble upon that uh, now before we get to some examples. And uh, to do that, we need to specify what points we're looking at. If, it, if we're looking at only general points, it will be impossible to make that estimate or very difficult to make anything other than a very gross estimate. So at this point, we're going to assume that the points are equally spaced. And the spacing is going to be b minus a over n. Then it's easy to see that between x0 and xn we have the this product from the previous from the theorem previous page is bounded by n factorial h to the n which is uh, given by uh, this quantity n factorial times the quantity b minus a over n raised to the nth power it's possible to get slightly tighter estimates even if there's a factor of a quarter in there that you can worry about. We're, we're not worried about that right now. What we're worried about is this, the magnitude of that quantity in conjunction with the f n plus first derivative of the function. So uh, putting it all together, uh, the estimate of the product and the other is that we have the difference between the function and the interpolant is bounded by the maximum value of the n plus first derivative times b minus a over n raised to the nth power divided by n plus 1. The maximum is taken over all over an interval that contains all of these points. So this means you can actually go outside the interval and still get an estimate. So the approximating error of, uh, of approximation, the, uh, the estimated, estimated error of approximation really depends on the n plus first derivative of the original function. The other terms, namely these, are the same for every function. So that's the key term right there. Making this estimate is very difficult. Uh, except in very simple cases, in which case you would maybe do something else. Uh, in the slides below, we'll just so show uh, how well equally spaced interpolants approximate various functions. Okay? So the key is this derivative, but simultaneously, this derivative is something you often cannot estimate. note and keep the, keep these points in mind it actually turns out that using equally spaced points is not necessarily the best strategy for interpolation but it is the simplest not the best it may also be that using a polynomial of high degree is not the best method for interpolation. A powerful competitor is the so-called spline, which we will also look at in this course, and in particular the cubic spline. We'll save these topics for another day. What we're going to do now is look at a few examples. So what we start with is a function, an interval, the number of subdivisions of the interval, which means we'll have n subdivisions, which implies n plus 1 points. 
and then we're going to look at the graphs of the function and the interpolants. Okay? So those are all the ingredients, and we're going to use Maple to compute those, and those will be the graphics you see. Let's start with something very easy, the sine function. It's just up and down, or down and up, and then down between minus pi and pi. That's one period of the sine function. And we're going to take a polynomial of degree 4. The original function is blue. The interpolant is red. And you can see that a fourth degree polynomial does fairly well in approximating the sign, but not really well. All we need to do for this function is jump up the number of points to 8. And then you can see the interpolant and the function are so close that it, they're visually indistinguishable. Although there is error there, you just can't see it visually. Let's look at the higher derivatives. If you recall, we looked at the n plus first derivative uh, over uh, n plus 1 factorial. And we've computed these uh, up to 8. And what you see, if you count them, there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's only four you can see. The others are so small uh, that they are lying upon the x-axis. So you can't really see them. This is one of the problems of using visual information. Sometimes it's what you can't see that is kind of important. Let's look at another example here. This function has a little more wobble to it. It's e to the x sine x. And here the original function uh, runs like this. It's in blue. And for n equals 4, the interpolant is not very good at all. But all we have to do is jump up to n equals 8. And the interpolant is so accurate that the only place you can see the difference between the red and the blue is right in this range here. So the approximation is very, very, very good. And we could do, ex uh, we could do an analysis on the derivative of this. Uh, you can compute higher order derivatives of e to the x sine x. They're going to involve uh, e to the x sine x and e to the x cosine x in uh, some combinations. And you can uh, estimate it quite accurately. Now let's look at the classical example of bad interpolation. And it is the function. It's sort of a bell-shaped curve, although it is not the bell-shaped curve. It is the blue one. It goes up and down like that. And for n equals 6, we approximate it with, with this uh, polynomial. And you can see it's just plain not good. When we jump up to 12 points, where you would think things would get better, the approximation apparently becomes worse. Although it's, it's a little better in this range, toward the end points, the approximation is becoming very inaccurate. And this often happens to these approximations. Uh, when they go bad, they go bad at the end points. But there's no guarantee where it is bad. It would be simple to construct an example where it's bad in the middle and good at the ends, no matter how high you went. And, and it, in fact, if we go higher values of n, the approximation just gets worse, although it does get much better in the middle. OK? This is the classic example of bad in a, a function that interpolates poorly at equally spaced points. Now in this case, we're going to look at uh, the derivatives up to order n equal 12. And all divided by n factorial, just like in the previous example. And here you can see these, these derivatives are becoming really huge near the origin. Even though they're huge near the, near the origin, the errors 
occur, the big errors occur at the end point. So this is uh, something to be aware of. So we can conclude here the uh, there's maybe little control of the error approximation. In fact, for this function, you would not use equally spaced points. Indeed, if you have other options of points, that is, arbitrary points, there are much better methods. And we'll talk about them later on in the course. However, sometimes all you have is data that occurs sort of at time stamps. Every millisecond or every tenth of a second you get some data. And you then must use that data. Just by the way, here is the twelfth derivative of the function. And as you can see, it's a mess. And I wouldn't even ask you to compute that by hand. This was computed by uh, Maple. In the last example, we're going to look at a function that is not differentiable at 0, the absolute value function. It is the function that is uh, 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 looks like a wedge or a v. And you can see when n is 12, the interpolants are reasonable, but still they're not very good. However, when we go up to 24, n equal 24, and take a lot of divisions, the endpoint behavior is so terrible, it goes here down to minus, uh, almost minus 70, that it distorts the scale of the graph. This is still height of 3. Down here we have a height, uh, height of minus 70. So you can see in this example, by taking more points, we do far poorer near the endpoints. So that's uh, what we wanted to show you today. And I hope it uh, sheds some light on interpolating at equally spaced points.